Yeah. And you know, they, they had no choice in the matter. They were just became the property of the people. Right. Yeah, yeah, basically. And the, oh, they could also marry them. And if they did, they had provisions. You have to cut off all of her hair, and you have to do this and that. And but and then if you take her as your wife, and you, you're not happy with her, you can't treat her any longer as a slave. You have to treat her as somebody who was your wife because you have now defiled her. So the Lord looked after these people, but this is the way cultures were run back then. Nowadays, when we go in and we overthrow a country, and we've done it a million times, the girls voluntarily give themselves to the guys. I, I can tell you, I've been in the Philippines, I've been in Japan, I've been in all the places where our bases are in a country even 20 and 30 years after the war, and they set up their own infrastructure so that the rest of the women are taken care of and aren't defiled because, you know, military people are notorious for going in and doing this kind of thing. So in Japan, they had actual volunteers. They said, we need to have volunteers for our brothels. If not, then any woman is going to be susceptible. Now, Americans wouldn't have done this, and they had no idea about it. But these women that started out in um, uh, the brothels in Japan were all volunteers, all of them. And a lot of them didn't know what they were getting into. They'd never been with a man, and there were suicides. There was all this, but I got the book out in my car. It was very detailed chronology of after Japan. But most of the places where American bases are, where we went in and took over, they voluntarily set these things up. We don't go in, and if one of our soldiers, in other words, was to go over to Iraq right now, or Afghanistan, where we overthrew the country, and we raped a woman, that soldier would get court-martialed. And I bet it was the same in Vietnam, wasn't it? If you violent, violently overthrew or you know, did that to them, but there's no problem with them having brothels. They're all over military bases. I mean, as far as the eye can see, you know, but. Even in Iraq? Well, I don't know, but I'm sure they do. Oh, yeah. I'm sure they do. I, I, I am sure. It may be not it's open. on in Iraq. Yeah, but I, you know what? I, 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 there's money to be made. And let me tell you what, the guys, the guys are the ones that go out to the, the villages and get these young, beautiful girls. They couldn't care. They could not care. It's the same thing as the self-loathing Jews. The Muslims are no different. They, their religion says don't do these things, but money takes a higher priority. Then I am sure that Iraq is full of places like that. You go off the base, and I'm sure there are all kinds of places where you can go get what you need. Oh. Yeah, man. But they never Thailand called them prostitutes. No. Say, well, even today, in Thailand, I got to tell you what. Even today in Thailand, terrible. not. They were yeah, but, but that is. I got to tell you something. That is the standard in Thailand. That's not around just the bases. I've been to Thailand since all the bases have been gone. I was there in the the 80s and in the 90s and even early 2000s. And everywhere I go, everywhere I went in Thailand, they have them there. It is just the standard. It's a very, uh, you know, the society is just geared towards it. There's no God. I mean, Buddha. Yeah, but no, yeah. That, that whole, the Thai and Laos society, when I was over there, yeah. the whole society is geared towards it. It's just, as a matter of fact, some people sell out their wives. It's just a common thing. It just, you know. Yeah, what they call courtesy patrols. Oh, yeah. Uh, master sergeants and above had to escort the air police downtown with the Thai police to go to every bar <coughs> to make sure everybody was behaving. Behaving, yep. They do that in Korea, or they did that. I don't know how it is in uh, Korea now, but... Even uh, the, the Thai police used to go check the health cards. Oh, yeah. Got to check them because they have to be checked for AIDS and checked for syphilis and all that. And Same thing in Korea. All along the bases, same thing. Yeah. But that's just the way it is. But anyway, I don't know how we got on that other than the fact that that uh, you know, this this is not uncommon. In other words, what happened here? And now they just go in and they loot the entire town, take the wives, take the children. It is all their. Pro that's how we got onto that. Absolutely. Okay. So go ahead. Uh, Thirty. Uh, then Jacob said to Simeon and Levi, "You have brought trouble on me by making me a stench to the Can Canaanites and Perizzites. Ber the people living in this land." We are few in number, and if they join forces against me and attack me, I and my household will be destroyed. But they replied, should, 
Okay, so two things here. First is that Jacob is once again showing a lack of faith because he's already been given the promises. Yeah. Yeah. He's already told them this, but at the same time, he is right in what he said to his children. Is that, you know, you've made us a stench, now we're going to have to move, we're going to have to be on our, our lookout. And I don't know if he realized at this point or not, I have no idea if he realized that his 12 sons were going to be the 12 tribes of Israel or if that's something that he was revealed later because his blessing at the end of the, the book of Genesis indicates that he blessed each one of them as a tribe. Unlike the father, which I can only give you the blessing and I've already given your brother the blessing and you know, it's, it, it's somewhere along the line he realized that these are the 12 tribes of Israel and it probably as I said it was probably back when he wrestled with the man because his name has changed and it's showing that it's not just the single line it is now kind of a government structure but it does show a failing here and at the same time he is saying the right thing to his children but then they said the right thing back to dad should we have allowed them to treat you know where is the justice Okay, and the question is, would we have gotten justice in their courts? Well, no, that's the, the, the father is the leader of the town. So, I mean, it's just the entire thing is a difficult situation. The whole thing. That's chapter 34 of Genesis is just entirely difficult in every aspect simply because a guy did the wrong thing. He should have followed the right procedures. And my guess is, although we have no idea to know, my guess is they would have said, yeah, you can marry our daughter. You need to be circumcised. You need to do this and this, and she's yours. That's my guess it would have happened, but I don't know if that's correct or not. Yes? My translation says odious. Odious, yeah. That's a, or obnoxious in this one. You're going to become an odor, a stink in our nose. Yeah. That's, that, yeah, I like that word. I do too. That's very well done. Mine says obnoxious. It doesn't really quite have the same, uh, same effect as a stench or to become odious. So anyway... Chapter 35. Go ahead, please. Uh, then God said to Jacob, Go up to Bethel and settle there and build an altar there to God, who appeared to you when you were fleeing from your brother Esau. So Jacob said to his household and to all who were with, who were with him, Get rid of the foreign gods you have with you, and purify yourselves and change your clothes. Okay, so the, the one thing that I always find kind of unusual is in 35.1 it says, God said to Jacob, go back to Bethel where you were, okay, where I first appeared to you, and there make an altar there to God. It's like saying, God said make an altar to me, but it says God instead of to me. You know what I'm saying? And so it's telling me, as I said, when you go to John 1, it's the parallel of the angels ascending and descending on this ladder that go to heaven, and he says, you will see the angels ascending and descending on me. He's making an altar there to the Lord. It says God, but I, I, once again, I see Jesus in this. Do you see what I'm saying? Because Jesus is the one that said, I, you will see the angels ascending and descending on me. Which, so. which word, which, Greek, which uh, Hebrew word that is? For God there? Both gods. Are I'm sure it's Elohim both times. Yeah, because that's the way it's translated, and God is normally translated from Elohim. So I can check real quickly, but uh, I just, he, usually when he says do something, he would say me, but he says make it to God when he just, you know, yeah, it just, it seem, the wording seems cumbersome to me, and that's why I kind of see Jesus in there, but where are we, 35? I'm sure it'll say Elohim both times, but let's see here, 38, 37, 36, 35, and then, um, yeah, Elohim and to uh, Le'el. Okay, to God. So it says Elohim here and then El here. Just El without Elohim. So it is, it's the same word, but it's not the majestic plural. Elohim is and then El is God. Like El, Elohim, Israel. God, the God of Israel. So once again, I'm seeing Jesus all over this, but that's just me because... Anyway... Um, uh, get rid of the foreign gods among you. Yeah. Okay. Now, probably some of the uh, people that they took captive brought some of their gods. Why they would when their whole family was just killed. I don't know. That God failed me. But he, telling them to get rid of him, he's also probably telling Rachel because he knew that Rachel, somehow he must have figured out that Rachel had those gods and she had stolen from Laban. Laban. But he knows that there's foreign gods among them. Get rid of them. Okay. So that's what he's telling them to do. 
clothes, those changing yes. clothes. Oh, uh, they you know, it, they want to present themselves properly before the Lord. And so, you know, it, there is something there is something to be said for dressing properly on Sunday. Okay? I don't dress as well as I could, but there is something about not showing up looking really shabby in church. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, we don't want to make it mandatory. That's mm -hmm. the problem. Is once you make something That's mandatory, right. then it becomes legalism and people start looking down on other people because you're not wearing a tie or you're not wearing shoes. But there is something to be said about proper decorum. And these people, he's saying, you know, we're going to present ourselves there. We're going to build an altar to the Lord. And so changing their clothing, purifying themselves, which means keeping themselves from defilement, which, you know, the law hasn't been written yet, so we can't insert the law here. And too many people will do that. They'll say, well, they were following the Leverett Law. Well, Leverett Law didn't come until hundreds of years later. Okay, yeah. You can't insert the law where the law is not. But they did have traditions and customs that they knew about. Uh, the, the only thing is we just need to be careful what they are. You know, Saturday, we tend to, uh, on Saturday night, we're still way back in Genesis 9, 10, and 11, whatever, somewhere around there. And we're still arguing these things where people are saying, it had to be a blood sacrifice because, well, the Bible doesn't say it's a blood sacrifice. It never says that. And so you've got to be careful not to insert things that aren't in the Bible. But there is something to be said about presenting yourself before the Lord that they knew was proper. That's all I'm getting at. But it still all boils down to not the external, but the internal. The internal. Your heart. Yeah. That's right. Man, yeah. You said if you make it a law, then it's just like saying it, you've got to give a certain amount of money. It, yeah. becomes, it becomes an external act of obedience. And legalism where other people start pointing right. fingers and all of a sudden you've got people once again in bondage. So it's you've got to be careful with all of these type of things not to overdo them, but not to underdo them. You know, it just... Isn't it interesting that before the law, Jacob already recognizes... That's what I'm saying. The need there, to, there's something that they already understood. Yeah. They already understood that there is something... Like if, if you, Where do you wear your best if it's not to, to church to worship God? But what is your best? That's what we're saying here. What is your best? Whatever to me, best. to me, I have much nicer clothes in... I, I mean, I've got some really, really nice clothes in there, and they are not me. They are simply we not pass me. Out, Charlie. If the what? You, you know, that would be quite. You know what? Now, when I, if a they disturbance they, in this church. Well, yeah, but you know, they've asked me to preach again, and I will wear some nicer clothes. But I got to tell you what, there, you know, it, it, unless we get somebody in here, you know, they said, you know, would you be willing to? Because we're going to lose one of the three preachers here in the next few months. So, uh, yeah, Mike is moving to uh, China, but. Um, you know, do I walk in, you know, my best, my best clothes, right? They're a mess dress from the military. Nobody would wear a mess dress, and yet it is the nicest looking thing I own. So what I'm saying is, at what point do we say, this is unacceptable, or this is acceptable? That's, you know? you, that's a decision you have to make. Well, that's right. And, but for somebody to say, you know, you shouldn't be wearing sandals to church on Sunday to me, they are going to lose me from this church that week, because this is me. This is who I am. There's nothing improper about it. There's nothing that is, is uh, uh, degrading to God. And in fact, to me, I would rather appear barefoot in every aspect of my life than ever wear shoes because this is the way that God made me and I love being barefoot. Right? So y y you have to be careful when you start imposing standards on people. But as I said, there is a, a cultural norm that people need to follow. And if you go to Indonesia, that cultural norm is going to be different than Africa. Sure. And in Africa, it's going to be different than it is in Florida. And Florida is going to be different than Massachusetts. And so we've yeah. got to be really, really careful that when it says purify yourself and uh, what did it say? Where was it? Um, uh, change your garments. Are they putting on their very best garments? Are they putting on what is appropriate for the, the circumstances? I don't know. But anyway, um, it, when Ruth was told to go before Boaz, she was told to put on her best garments. And he is a picture of the Redeemer. Okay, so, but am I appearing before the Lord when I'm in church? Because I'm always in the Lord's presence. Right? Do you see? I mean, you got to be careful. When I appear before the Lord physically, when He comes, He will give me garments to wear. I'm not going to be wearing any of this stuff. I'm going to be wearing His righteousness and they're going to be completely His.
So I don't really know. I, I, you know, I could walk around all day, every day in a suit and a tie, and it's not going to get me anywhere closer to God. Amen.